The whole NBA is talking about LaMelo Ball right now. His basketball IQ, his feel, his positional size, all high level. He has scouts so impressed. He is a potential number one pick. He seems to have all the skills at what, 6'7", six, 6'8"? Six, Here's a player that scored 90 points in a high school game. Melo Ball is a guy that NBA scouts are going to be traveling across the globe to watch. I mean, his basketball IQ being 6'7", being able to play pick and roll and pass the way he does, I mean, that's just special. Ball with the steal and the jam! It's been a windy road with a chaotic pit stop in Lithuania. But LaMelo Ball is arguably the most talented prospect in the entire 2020 draft class and a potential number one pick thanks to his elite basketball instincts and creativity at 6'7". Brooks. Oh! 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 see the replay. Yeah, nice find by the ball. The look away, always there. Like a triple-double waiting to happen with the way he plays. Just so active in all the different areas. And there's the great vision. Physically, Ball unsurprisingly holds similarities to his older brother Lonzo. While an inch taller, his frame and length are nearly identical at the same age. Even athletically, there are resemblances with quick feet and excellent open court speed. Ball has elite positional size for a point guard at 6'7", with a steadily improving frame and solid length. His tools, along with his instincts, make him a factor on the glass, as he's averaging 8.6 rebounds per 40 minutes. Although not always seeking contact, he'll eventually have the body to take smaller guards to the front of the rim off the bounce. That height also allows him to see over defenders picking apart defenses with his vision. A non-defender as a youngster, Ball is starting to show flashes on that end in part because of his size and quick feet. Here you can see how he slides on the perimeter, bodying up the opponent and eventually battling in the post, winning the hand fight and denying a post touch. That doesn't happen every time down with his inconsistent focus level, but in the switch-heavy NBA, Ball has a lot of value if he buys in. He's also able to turn defenders in the backcourt when he's fully engaged, covering ground quickly with the slides in part because of his size. Although we don't have an official wingspan measurement, he has great positional length for a point guard and is able to bother jump shooters when he's fully stretched out, eventually being able to guard one through three if he locks in. Lonzo was also knocked for his casual nature as a high schooler, and he's turned into one of the league's elite defenders at his position, something Melo has a chance to do as well. Above all else, it's Ball's feel for the game and passing instincts that make him such a special prospect. It starts in the open court, where he passes bigs open with high arcing, one-handed touch passes that generally land right in the breadbasket. Now, Illawarra's aging bigs have cost Ball quite a few assists so far this season, but that hasn't deterred him from rewarding his teammates for sprinting the floor. He also does have that on-the-money football-style pass, a staple of the run-and-gun Chino Hills teams that took over high school basketball. Ball is electric when he pushes off the break also, showing off his open court speed, trusty handle, and accuracy to find open shooters. Here's Ball's most eye-opening transition pass of the season. Now, after securing the defensive rebound, he whips his head around to see what his options are, identifying Aaron Brooks early. From there, he makes his way toward the former NBA guard, slowing up just enough to give Brooks time to sprint past two defenders. Ball fires a one-handed no-look pass with just enough English to sneak through the tight window, yet hit Brooks right in the hands in stride. That's a special pass from the 18-year-old. He plays with a lot of flair in the open court and incentivizes teammates to get out and fill the lanes. Like most of the NBA's best passers, Ball is elite off the dribble with the ability to deliver passes with either hand. This is one of his most impressive highlights of the year as he evades the hard hedge with a wrap dribble, transfers the ball back to his right hand with one bounce and drops off a behind the back dime to the roll man, basically all in one motion. He's operating off straight instincts, basically freestyling on the floor. He's excellent at whipping the ball to teammates with a head of steam, showcasing incredible accuracy. A lot of players would just take the lane to the rim here, but Ball sees Mitch Creek hustling toward the cup, decides three is better than two, and delivers the frozen rope for the hockey assist. Again, great pace and pick and roll. Here he sees the weak side defender loaded up to help on the roller and takes advantage with a laser beam to the shooter on the wing. He's ambidextrous and accurate with his deliveries, boasting a 2.75 to 1 assist to turnover ratio through seven regular season games. Ball also manipulates defense with his eyes, creating angles for himself with lookaways and ball fakes. The majority of his passes come of the no-look variety, 
and you can see here the window he opens by simply showing the ball to the corner before darting a look away pass to the roller over the top. There are a lot of subtleties to his passing attack that play a big role in his accuracy and his timing. Again, here you can see he freezes the on-ball defender by looking off to the corner as the big streaks down the lane, firing an absolute dime to Sam Froling right on the money. His ability to deliver the ball from all different angles allows him to fit passes into crevices most point guards can't, here neutralizing the help defender's length by shifting his eyes up toward the rim while dropping the bounce pass down to the cutter. It may look unnecessary at times, but these look-offs buy just enough time to delay rotations and generate clean looks for his teammates. In addition to his next level passing, Ball is also an instinctual cutter, diving back door if he's overplayed and then picking apart the scrambling defense from there. His quickness and size help him shake defenders and then his basketball genius shines, here with the accurate backhanded bounce pass to the open shooter. Lastly, his instincts show up on the offensive glass. He's regularly around the ball, reading it off the rim impressively to create extra possessions. His feel really shines through here as he somehow knows exactly where Aaron Brooks is on the floor without even looking his direction. Then again, a picture-perfect tap out right into the shooting pocket that could have easily gone for an assist. Unlike Lonzo, Lamelo has a whole bunch of wiggle and shake to his game, regularly putting defenders on skates. It starts with a basic left-handed hang dribble, which will become extremely valuable should he ever develop into a more consistent pull-up three-point shooter. He has counters off this also, showing his agility on left-to-right spins to get to the front of the rim. Decal or not, he leaves defenders wobbly with his ability to stop on a dime, going to this behind-the-back stomp dribble to shake his man. He uses this to set up his three ball as well. He also keeps bigs off balance on switches, mixing in sweeping crossovers with quite a bit of shift in his lower body. His ability to go from slow to fast into combo moves is rare for a player his size, and he uses that to split ball screen coverages, keeping the ball low and tight to avoid turnovers. Then there's this Jordan-esque fake spin along the baseline, leaving his defender stuck before creating an open three. He'll need to become a more efficient half-court scorer down the road, but having the ability to shift gears at his size gives LaMelo considerable upside as a scorer. Although he's shooting under 20% from three so far, Ball has natural touch on his three ball with his feet set or off the dribble. He's actually knocked down 7 of 17 catch-and-shoot threes through 10 regular season and preseason games, and his overall percentages are more a reflection of his shot selection than his actual touch. According to our database, he's an 83% free throw shooter on 230 career attempts. He has deep range and unwavering confidence. Despite somewhat of a two-handed push shot and undisciplined mechanics, he gets fairly straight rotation and is capable of lofting the ball in from distance. His touch also shows on his float game, which he'll fire from all over the floor, even close to three-point range. Whether off one leg or two, he's able to use this bailout shot to neutralize shot blockers, even if he goes to it a little more than you'd like given his size at 6'7". Ball is also an instinctual defender who can wreak havoc in the passing lanes. He's averaging 2.3 steals per 40 minutes so far and does a lot of his damage in the backcourt after turnovers or misses, a staple in the way he played as a youngster. He has outstanding anticipation in the half court as well, reading the opponent's eyes to jump on the ball and use his quick hands to jar it loose. These defensive instincts were developed basically from being the youngest of three brothers playing horse and 21 in the backyard. He's still learning defensive schemes and rotations, but he's slowly understanding where to be in pick and roll, here in perfect position to help on the roller. Now he doesn't always use his body to wall up in these situations, but the instincts are certainly there. Then again, you can see his timing here, rotating out of the corner to block the roller at the rim. Should he ever fully commit to the defensive end, LaMelo Ball has the instincts and physical tools to be an impactful defender at the NBA level. When Ball is knocking down the deep pull-up threes he so often likes to take, he looks like the number one pick. Unfortunately, he's shooting only 19% from three at this juncture, with misses in every which way. As you can see here, he gets a lot of his offhand index finger on the ball before he releases it. Unconventional, to say the least. He's inconsistent with his feet also, sometimes jackknifing his lower body forward and landing on one leg. On top of that, he has a tendency to snake bite his follow-through, rarely staying in his shot. 
In part because of his low release, Ball doesn't have much of a mid-range game in his arsenal either, which ultimately results in a lot of low percentage floaters rather than a more conventional rise and fire pull-up jumper. Ball's lack of consistency on the defensive end can drive coaches crazy. While most of his miscues are off the ball, he still tends to get caught on screens, not showing enough fight to contest when he does get hit. He struggles to remember coverages as well, here going under on one of the league's best pull-up shooters. He's not as active as he could be with his length either, getting caught with his hands down, which leads to an easy bucket. Used to playing more of a chaotic style, Ball loves to go completely rogue and gamble for steals, handicapping the rest of his teammates. While he'll come up with a steal or two, he needs to do a much better job of picking his spots. He loves to dig off of shooters also, here giving the 40% marksman an open look. When he's not gambling, you can see him standing completely upright in his stance. Now this is a late fourth quarter blowout, but it's still a bad look for scouts evaluating him. He doesn't jump to the pass, turns his back, and allows his opponent to waltz right into the lane. Then he gets completely turned around here, losing sight of his man as he sits in the gap. He gets out of position in early offense situations, giving his man the angle to get to the front of the rim. Then when he's supposed to be at the rim as the weak side wing defender, he doesn't rotate. He needs to show more effort and energy getting in position and using that size and length to alter shots at the rim rather than watching the opponent finish uncontested. Then there's his offensive decision making, which can infuriate his coaches. While he's making strides, here you can see he'll just jack up a deep contested three with no effort to initiate offense. While transition pull-up threes are a staple of some of the NBA's best guards, he doesn't shoot it well enough yet to warrant these Dame Lillard-style pull-ups. He'll bail out bigs on switches, here settling for the 30-footer with 15 on the shot clock. He has the handle and shifty nature to attack slower-footed bigs, he just prefers to go for the knockout punch a little too often. His unwavering confidence can get him in trouble at times, and finding the balance between deep strike threes and getting downhill should be a priority for him moving forward. He can also get a little too casual with his passes, resulting in unforced turnovers. Despite his size, Ball isn't yet a reliable finisher in traffic, partially due to his somewhat contact-averse style. He's shooting only 4.4 free throws per 40 minutes so far this season and too often settles for floaters rather than getting into the body of bigs. Now that should improve as his body naturally fills out, but you'd like to see him be a little bit more aggressive getting to the front of the rim rather than settling for these elbow floaters. He's a bit of a flash over substance finisher as well, getting too cute with the ball rather than just going up strong. His still evolving finishing package gets him in trouble when he's in the pocket also. Because of his erratic shooting, decision making, and inconsistent finishing, Ball has a true shooting percentage under 42% so far, raising some questions about how efficiently he'll be able to score at the NBA level. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.